uh, so last week we talked about the uh, federal agents that are uh, kidnapping people in Portland. And uh, these are unmarked. Uh, they were in unmarked minivans, and they were wearing military fatigues, and they were no name tags, no agency name, they, and they were just grabbing people um, from the street that fit the profile uh, of, a, of a Black Lives Matter protester or something, and they would take them to the courthouse and process them and take their shit, never read them their rights, never tell them what they did wrong, so on and so forth, right? Uh, so they've, they've lost. They got defeated. They have to uh, leave Portland now. Um, Portland was the was the first stop for them. I think Chicago, uh, Kansas, a couple other cities were also on that list um, of 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 places that they were going to go and target. So the protesters uh, pushed back. I think this was like a week and a half, two weeks of of standoffs, um, and eventually they were defeated, and now they have to leave. Portland, right? Um, and and I'm not really sure if if this is going to continue. I, I would I would wager to bet that it will. I will wager to bet that it will continue. Like I I would wager to bet that it, in a week or two in Chicago, we will see this shit again. I probably. Right. So uh, this is what the governor of Oregon had to say. Kate Brown, Oregon Governor Kate Brown, announced Wednesday that the federal officers brought in to quell the anti-racism protests in Portland will leave the city beginning Thursday after weeks of violent clashes with demonstrators. As federal officers have acted as an occupying force, refused accountability, and brought violence and strife to our community. Uh, which is true, which is true, right? I mean, that's sort of the thing that they do. There's always an escalation when cops and military and riot gear show up. That's just something that happens. And we know that that's something that happens. It, yeah, everything will be peaceful. The cops show up, and then everybody gets tense, right? Everybody gets worried. What are these guys doing? Why are they here? So on and so forth. And and then because they're tense, anything can kind of set it off. And usually it's the cops. Usually it's the cops that set it off. Like in Portland, a guy that was holding up a boombox got shot in the face with a rubber bullet. And it's completely legal, and it's completely fine because they consider that to be a less than lethal weapon, but the dude had to have facial reconstructive surgery. How is that less than lethal? It's not less than lethal. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it, they, they totally escalate the situation and they're known to escalate these situations. They use tear gas, they use rubber bullets, uh, they use uh, the, the paintball, pepper balls, they pepper spray people all the time. These are not de-escalation tactics. They're going to escalate the things. They kettle these protesters, they, and then they march at them as a military force, right? So they're using military strategy against civilians protesting, um, you know, against racial injustice, against, the, against police brutality, um, against violence, violent policing. And you can see here, um, uh, they're, they're saying that it's a phased withdrawal uh, after talks with uh, VP Mike Pence, which basically means that this occupation is going to continue for a while. Like they're going to say they're going to start leaving on Thursday, but but it, it might take four or five weeks for them to get out of Portland completely. Uh, and like I said, it, it, it also reports that this is clashes with anti-racism protesters. So the federal agents were attacking anti-racism protesters, which makes these federal agents racists. <laughs> like, is that, is that they're just blatantly coming out and saying it? And they're just coming out and saying it at this point, right? Like, they're just coming, they're just like, these anti-racists gotta be stopped. Why? What side are you on? Well, we can tell you we're not anti-racists. Are you pro race We can tell you that we're not anti-racists. But that's a double negative, so it cancels it out. So it kind of just makes you, hey, I'm not saying nothing, but all I'm saying is I ain't no anti-racist. Okay? That's it. So they're basically, these federal agents just kind of came out and said that they're racist. Here's the fun thing. Um, I thought this was kind of this was kind of a hilarious, uh, hilarious little thing that uh, that they have to do here. 
is, uh, if we look at the top, it says, before they go, the federal officers will also clean up the courthouse, removing graffiti, Brown said, which I think is fucking hilarious. Because if you're, look, if you're going to shoot a rubber bullet at somebody's face and, uh, you know, uh, cause them to have facial reconstructive surgery, the least you can do is fucking clean up the courthouse. Which the violence only escalated because of you. Fucking protesters weren't using rubber bullets and tear gas. Just you. Just the fucking federal officers. Portland police can't even use it. Portland police is banned from using um, tear gas. You know, because it's a chemical weapon. Um, and remember how everybody was mad that, uh, oh, we didn't do anything because Assad gasses people. It's like, well, here we are, gas and people. What does that mean? Does that mean that the other countries get to invade us? Take out the government in power? Enact a little regime change in America? Is that what it's going to fucking take? We're gassing our own people. Geneva Conventions does not, uh, does not really allow for uh, tear gas. So uh, the way that these guys were defeated was uh, well, be, because of solidarity, right? There, were, there was a wall of moms. These, these moms came out in yellow shirts uh, and then leaf blower dads that were using their leaf blowers to like blow away um, the tear gas, which is an effective way of, of blowing away tear gas to ensure that uh, people don't get affected with tear gas. So basically, like, essentially, it kind of sounds like maybe some suburbanites came out. And that's that's gonna that's kind of gonna be the way that things pick up is when these affluent suburban family members are like, oh, this shit is real, this shit is serious, and we need to go participate in some way. Um, and you know, I've talked a lot about what your role in a protest can be, whether it is in the front lines, and maybe you're not a front line person, right? If you're not a front line person, look, there's still people that. You know, need to dispel water, bring extra masks, uh, first aid kits, some food. There's people that need to document what's going on. There's people that need to amplify the voices of what's going on. There's people that need to help fund what's going on. And then there's people that come in with motherfucking leaf blowers and blow up the, you know, the fucking tear gas, the chemical weapons that are being used against the American people. Uh, so, you know... And this was kind of like a coalition of a bunch of different groups coming together. Uh, and this, you know, this sort of shit has, we've seen this happen just recently where people were going to the Seattle CHOP autonomous zone. And, you know, the media was saying that it's just, oh, it's this crazy death zone with no police and no rules. It's anarchy. There's people masturbating on the corners of every street. And you gotta, you know, you gotta give them a dollar to stop jacking it. And then they're 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 extorting small businesses within the area. And then some people would go down. They would be like, "Holy shit, this is crazy. We should." And then they go down. None of that stuff's happening. And everybody's just having a good, nice time. And you know, there's people giving out water and food and making sure people are taken care of. And it was kind of radicalizing people. And this is sort of the same thing. Is like, what is the escalation of continually having a a a souped up militaristic police force meet unarmed protesters. This is sort of the height of it. Is you send federal agents unmarked to start taking people away. Part of this is also the fact that the Democrats stay silent. Part of this is also the fact that the Republicans push this shit all the time. Part of this is a bunch of people coming out and being like, oh, defunding the police is too extreme of a movement. This is what happens when you overfund. There was a Navy veteran that they beat up to. This guy was basically another one of those people that saw what was going on. It was just like, we're I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this shit. This is not what I fought for. And then he went out. Um, they pepper sprayed him. They beat him. So they're anti-veteran now, too. They're racist and they're anti-vets. How do you support some somebody like this? Whether you're a Republican or Democrat, right? It doesn't even fucking matter what, what party you align yourself up with. All that is bullshit anyway. It's all theatrics. <laughs> Most of this party shit is all theatrics. How do you support that? 
how do you support a, a, a agency and a force that is specifically going out targeting anti-racists and veterans who are also anti-racist? That makes you racist anti-veterans. That's so insane to me. And then there are still people that are like, this is what we need more of. Now, the, uh, the mayor of Portland uh, made some news. Ted, Ted, Ted Wheeler made some news when he joined the protest the other day. Uh, usually this stuff is like a PR stunt to me. Every time I see something like this, I'm like, that's, that's nice that you did it, but it kind of just seems like you're upping your social profile, right? And, and then what it really does is there's this glorification of like, oh, one of us. Oh, man, he's just, he's just like the people, man. He's just like, he's just like a regular people dude, man. Like it's, you know, and then they glorify him. Um, and, you know, and then, and then they get to make excuses when they pass horrible pieces of legislation that fuck over the middle class, that, you know, let, let people down, that give banks more control, that, you know, allow for more police force, more militarism of the police, you know, racism in the streets and racism in, in, in employment and, and uh, homes and all. And, and then they go, but he marched with us, bro. I kind of, like that's sort of the pattern that we see in these sort of situations. And I kind of see it as a PR stunt. And the other thing that kind of bugs me when this sort of stuff happens too is it takes away from the movement. It takes away from the people that really started the movement, that really launched this thing forward, right? It really, really takes away uh, from, the, from, from the wall of moms, the leaf lower dads, the veterans that are out there, the regular rank and file that have done the work to actually push back against this authoritarian force and then push them out of the city, period. That's where the strength and solidarity is, right? It's not from Mayor Wheeler or, or Governor Brown, but, but from the people actually pushing back. That's where it is. And, you know, the, the media picks up on it because this is a fun, feel-good story of a scary situation. So instead of talking about the reality of what it is and trying to have a, a rational discourse conversation about it, let's make it a fun, you know, popcorn event where we can go, oh, that's so nice. See, they are one of us. This is nice. This is nice. And then they kind of, you know, and they, 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 so it, it, feel, it, it always kind of feels like this is an opportunistic moment. Uh, so I want to kind of point out that that's kind of what this might be. And it's nice. And you can say, well, that's nice that Tom Wheeler was part of this thing or, or Ted Wheeler uh, was, was part of this thing. But really the... Uh, the people that are responsible for the, the federal agents to leave Portland are the people, are the regular rank and file, you know, the people that came together and said, enough is enough. We don't want this unconstitutional kidnapping of the American people. We are done with the cops being overfunded. We are done with the, with, with the, with the, the, the blatant disrespect of the civil rights movement. That and the people are saying that, not not the you know, uh, not the governor or or the mayor. They are now, but, and I don't think they would have said anything had there not been <laughs> so many people pushing back. Right? If if we would have just been like, eh, nothing would have been said or done. They would have been like, oh man, this seems not awesome. And then they would have been quiet about it. So right now, uh, there is a lawsuit against the Trump administration over violating the First Amendment. And, and a lot of people have called this an unconstitutional occupation. And it 100% is an unconstitutional occupation. They were not reading people their rights. Uh, they were violating, I believe, the Fourth Amendment as well as their First Amendment. Because they were going... Um, after people's freedom of speech and people's freedom to, to protest, they were saying that those are those are not allowed. And again, this is sort of the, sh the kind of stuff like what the Espionage Act talked about, which is still in effect, and what the Patriot Act talks about, which is still in effect. Both things started by Democrats uh, and then big thumbs up from the fucking Republicans. 
See how there's fucking bipartisan support when it has anything to do with challenging power, when it has anything to do with challenging the status quo. There's always bipartisan support. That's why you have bipartisan. That's why there, there's so many fucking Democrats out there that won't support Medicare for all. Because that takes power away from the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical industries who pay them a pretty nice paycheck. This is, a, this is an example of that. This is an example of, of how far power can go. And the laws that are in place, the legislations that are in place, the Espionage Act, the Patriot Act, all of these things that are in place have given people like Trump the authority to do this. So again, when they're making laws, they have to think about this sort of stuff, which they don't. And then when people like me, co fucking comedians, come out and they're like, this seems like it could go really fucking south unless there's provisions set in place to not make it go south. They're like, oh, well, you're just, you know, you're a, you're a communist or you're a this. You're, oh, man, this guy's a radical. This guy's an anarchist. This guy's, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll try to use words like socialism to insult me and, and discount what I have to say. That's a typical play that they do. Uh, and in this instance now, it's, it's what the Trump administration has done is kind of shone this huge light on it and expose all this stuff. But there's still people that are like, well, the Democrats are the good guys because they still can't. It's like trauma thinking, like when you're in a, tr in like a real traumatic situation and when your identity is hooked into a party instead of like ideas and people. Um, it, you kind of do that where, like, if you go after a political institution, they're like, you're coming after me. So when you point out the fact that the Democrats are as much responsible for authoritarian acts like this and authoritarian acts have existed in the United States for a very, very long time, when you point that out, they, they take it personally. And it's like, no, this is just history. This is like your country's history. There's an imperialistic and authoritarian history in the United States that isn't taught to you. But once you learn it, you can't fucking unlearn it. But the fact is that you have to accept it. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that this kind of encourages people to look into that history, to look into how far this really goes back um, and, and see that this, this goes beyond party lines. This is not a... DR issue. This is not a left right issue. It's not a liberal conservative issue. This is people uh, in power trying to secure their place in power. And we just showed them that they can't, that we're going to push back and we're going to shift that, 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 you know, seesaw of power back to us where it should be. What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Please share it around with a friend or an enemy or whoever you think would enjoy a, a video like this. Uh, to share it out, uh, YouTube and Facebook usually suppress content like this. They don't usually show content like this to, to a lot of people. So I very much depend on you guys, the viewers and the fans of this show, to get the word out. Uh, and make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to make sure you're getting notifications about this video. Uh, I have a bunch of different ways that you can financially support this show. One is by just making a one-time donation. You can just make a one-time donation. Say, hey, that was a fucking great video, and I want to support it financially. Here's X amount of whatevers. Uh, another way is by becoming a sustaining member. Sustaining membership gets you free tickets to shows, uh, unreleased stand-up comedy content and storytelling content, and early access to a full uh, holistic episodes of Fork Full of Noodles uh, that you get weeks in advance. Weeks in advance, you guys. Uh, and another way to help is by coming to a live show. I've got a bunch of live stand-up comedy performances coming up. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Fringe Festival in Providence, Rhode Island, the, Pro uh, the Fringe PVD. All of these are virtual festivals, by the way. Uh, July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. If you want to be part of the virtual live audience, let me know. Send me a message. Leave a comment. Uh, email me. Uh, and I'll send you the donation link. And I'll make sure that you're on the list to be a part of the live virtual audience. It's July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. 
And then we're on to doing more of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Each week, brand new content, brand new material, and a brand new subject matter. And I donate half the ticket sales to a grassroots organization. Uh, the next one is August 7th, and then on August 14th and August 28th. And then we'll be moving right into the fall. So keep up with these dates. You can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for uh, continuing to come back to support this channel. Until the next one, we'll see you on the road. Thank you.